Grazie a Emiliano Brancaccio che in realtà mi ha rubato il mestiere perché ha fatto un intervento anche molto giornalistico, è partito da un forte elemento di attualità e lo ha collegato con il filone economico che si preparava ad affrontare. Io volevo partire proprio da lì, per, da questo intervento per eh, arrivare anche a una domanda a Michael Brancaccio e, e cioè... Il, il, il tema dell'incontro tra, tra Donald e Francesco. Bene, e, e la questione della eh, popolarità della, della linea Trump. Ora, è vero che c'è una, una vag, c'è cioè un'onda di crescita di consensi attorno a una visione arcaicizzante del mondo e questa è, alle volte con sfumature populiste, alle volte può avere il senso della decrescita, e, e questo c'è. Però io colgo un altro elemento che mi sembra più importante, cioè questo è indubbiamente un pericolo, però colgo un elemento positivo che mi sembra inaspettato fino a pochi anni fa e che credo eserciterà un peso importante. Cioè dove sono gli interessi reali dell'economia che si sta muovendo a livello globale? E a me non sembra affatto che l'economia continui a giocare principalmente la partita che ha giocato per 50 anni e cioè di difesa di un modello di sviluppo lineare senza contraddizioni principali. Io vedo che Google, Microsoft, Tesla, Apple hanno dato... Eh, lo sfratto culturale a Trump, si sono posti una politica di contrapposizione persino la Exxon signori miei, persino la Exxon cioè il cartello dei petrolieri ha chiesto di non uscire dall'accordo di Parigi vuol dire che il mondo dell'economia sia nella sua versione più avanzata che in quella più ancora legata allo sviluppo del XX secolo ha bisogno di stabilità e sa benissimo che eh, difendere i combustibili fossili vuol dire giocare la partita dell'instabilità perché è una partita che non ha futuro e non ha futuro perché? Proprio per le considerazioni che faceva Brancaccio prima, cioè perché là dove lo sviluppo decresce arriva un livello di povertà che minaccia valori che non possono essere non difesi, che sono quelli basilari della salute. La città più inquinata del mondo è Ulaanbaatar, è la Mongolia, dove per l'appunto bruciano di tutto per scaldarsi. E allora io credo che eh, un segnale come quello che da tre anni si registra, che il PIL continua a crescere circa del 3%, e le emissioni di CO2 si sono stabilizzate a livello globale, indica il fatto che è vero che l'Europa ha ridotto la sua virtuosità, anche se è stata per vent'anni leader di questo nel mondo, ma Cina e India, che hanno un peso enorme nello scenario globale, hanno cambiato la partita, almeno in parte, hanno avviato, avviato certo non è che sono già arrivati, ma hanno avviato un percorso di decarbonizzazione che li porta ad aumentare efficienza e rinnovabili, partendo da una situazione di tutt'altro tipo, però hanno ha imboccato quella strada. Ecco, allora io volevo chiedere a Braungart, che è un pioniere di questa visione del recupero, come, come sente che sono cambiati questi vent'anni, anche per darci la sua opinione di che cosa potrà succedere nei prossimi venti? I think I'm the wrong person to ask for that. You better would ask Roberto on it. Look, Roberto will be 90 years old in five days. It will his birthday next week, Wednesday. And he is smart. He looked over a period of so many years and he knows the difference. So I would better ask him uh, later in a discussion about because because you speak five languages, you can see the world from all different angles and I would really love to hear your statement more about it. I'm more humble. I want to talk about why I'm here at this conference and I would like to talk about cleaning products and I would like to talk about specific issues, why this industry is so important and what can be done in that industry. And then we w I would love to go back to the other point, definitely, because it needs to be in a bigger context. And as you mentioned with Ulaanbaatar, it is definitely true and to see that this is the highest contaminated place in the outside. But 
when you see indoor air pollution and you take Milano's outside air compared to indoor air pollution, the indoor air pollution is about three to seven times higher than outdoor air pollution. And we need, really need to see that we are losing in Italy five years of our lifespan by inhaling fine dust. Five years. This is three times more than by alcohol and it includes already the alcohol dependent people in that context. Uh, so, and to, when you drink alcohol, you can decide when you're not alcohol dependent uh, up, up to the third class, you can decide whether you want to drink or not, but what you're inhaling, you cannot decide. And this is why the, the cleaning industry is so key because uh, I would like to show you examples what we can do and I'm starting with the same thing and I go quickly through that and just I have slides whenever you open your eyes you can just see next slide whatever so it will be just a kaleidoscope of things in that so I would like to talk to you about beauty about quality about innovation not about sustainability anymore sustainability discussion was important for the past because we learned about the problems but it's not for the future if I ask you, how is your relationship with your wife, what do you say? Sustainable? Yeah, then I'm really sorry for you. Sustainability is a very sad definition because it sees us as a burden for this planet. Yeah, I think it takes a Swedish, uh, a Norwegian, Brundtland definition on sustainability to meet the needs of the, the present generation without compromising the needs of the future ones. <laughs> how sad. I want to be good for the future generations, not compromising the needs. Yeah, this is ridiculous. So it's, and when you look at how we define environmental protection from the past, then we see uh, we never protected the environment. We only destroyed it a little less. Yeah. So we think it's environmental protection when we reduce our waste uh, production, our water bill, our energy. But we are not protecting. We are only minimizing damage. Yeah. And it's like if I, if I tell you, uh, beat, please beat your child only five times instead of ten times, do you protect your child? No, we are only minimizing damage. And for that we are too many people on this planet. Was it 10 billion or 15 billion people? We, know, we need to learn to be good for this planet and that's a completely different mindset. This has to do with our religion as well because it says you are evil yeah, and only God can redeem you. This is why you only can be less bad. Yeah. So, uh, this is amazing. So in this logic, uh, Poland has been protecting uh, the environment so much better than France just by inefficiency. So if you make the wrong things perfect, they're just perfectly wrong. Yeah. I agree with your point. If you go down from a higher developed system to a lower one, it's immensely destructive like we see in Greece with the, with the, uh, the emissions in the city. It has to do as well that people cannot travel anymore, there, so they have to stay at their place, which they are causing more local emissions as well. But I want to talk to you about innovation, about quality, about beauty, and I want to talk about the relevance of this industry, why you are really in the key, the key for the future in that. And I did the same. I looked at different uh, areas, and you can make rankings for uh, the 20 most uh, polluted, and I agree with you more. It's more Ulan Batur than in Nigeria or Pakistan because of the, in the uh, at winter you have much uh, bigger inversion rate so the pollution gets much higher. But let's look here, let's look at indoor air quality. 40% yeah, of all the houses in Italy have malt, schimmel in Dutch. Yeah. So what is it in Italian, malt? Schimmel, yeah, so, mm, so, mm. You, Robert, what is schimmel? In, in so it's so we need to if you do man, we one favor if you learn just one thing from today take out laser printers wherever you have them every every laser printer is emitting 6 to 8 billion fine dust particles 6 to 8 billion per page yeah. so and these are like little harpoons and they destroy your your immune system immediately, they make go like your, all your cells and cut them into and they make little infection, they, they cause strokes, they cause heart attacks and, and the laser printers are the worst. And the worst company is Kyocera, even they have only 30% of the market, 80% of the people who get ill are from Kyocera printers. So please make sure that you, and, and, and the, the inkjet printers are much cheaper already as well in printing and they take 
90% less energy as well. So, it, 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 but we still use these laser printers and we have to take them out. We need separate ventilation systems. Sure, we can protect ourselves like this one, but does it make sense? I'm looking where pollution comes from. Uh, half of European wallpapers are washable wallpapers with PVC, with plasticizers. And, and we look at carpet, so I do put things in glass boxes, look what is off casing. But people think it, it, they, are, they, have, they take a natural product because it's cleaner, it's better, or it's better for us. But nature didn't develop the sheep, invent the sheep for the carpet. Yeah and not for making red, red wine resistant. Yeah. So when you have a red wine resistant wool carpet, you're never in touch with the wool, you're only in touch with Teflon. And these are heavy emissions. There are 20 carcinogens, which you can see <coughs> on this slide off gazing from, from this carpet. So you need to look whether you, you want, if you want to use a natural material, you need to use it in a way how it's intended by nature. Otherwise, you're causing far more problems by that. Instead of that, we try to be more efficient. When I was a child, a cow was producing 5,000 liters of milk. Now we are up to 12,000 liters in Netherlands. I'm teaching at the Erasmus School of Management in Rotterdam. And shall I breed another pair of legs for this sheep? These are 300,000 consultants who talk to you about efficiency. But when you make the wrong things perfect, they're perfectly wrong. Yeah. So we traditionally take things, we make things, we put them into landfills, and we think that when we do it a little less, it would be good for the environment. We, nothing is designed for us. Toilet paper, we go around here, called 100% recycled, you're causing with one kilogram of toilet paper, as an average of all what you see here, at least eight million tons, eight liters of water being contaminated higher than drinking water standard, because even toilet paper is not designed for the environment. It's only just, it's even sometimes not designed for you behind, but it's definitely not designed to leave it behind. Yeah. So we see these magazines are never made for us. Yeah. The off casing, the heavy metals in a magazine like Stern magazine in Germany, when you eat a pizza, with one pizza you eat one third of a business card. Yeah. You could learn it with Barilla uh, pasta, yeah. because when you use re recycled paper cardboards, you, the fillers, from the recycling go into, into cardboards. So with one pizza, you, you eat one third of a business card from printing chemicals because the stuff is never intended to be recycled. And the critical thing is now that we stay in the middle. When you take an IKEA catalog, for example, this IKEA catalog, when it was printed in, in Europe, there are 200 million copies still printed of printed uh, catalogs of IKEA. When this catalog is printed in Europe, it has about 50 dangerous chemicals in which don't allow composting. Yeah. And they don't allow burning in a fireplace as well when you want to use the ash in the agriculture, or it causes pollution when you burn it in your house in, in an increase uh, in that to reduce your fossil fuels. It's a nightmare. There are 50 dangerous chemicals. 30 years ago, we had 90 dangerous chemicals in it. So where's the difference whether you get shot 50 times or 90 times? Yeah, you're just a little less bad. Yeah. And this doesn't help us. Now the catalog is printed in China. It has 90 dangerous chemicals. And it's, you fly it into Milano Malpensa yeah, the next day. And then you have, yeah, in the, the, in the capital of design of the world. Yeah. And then we do <laughs> recycling for 90 dangerous chemicals. And we, we are complaining that uh, environment is so expensive, environmental protection. Instead of saying paper is a biological material, needs to be designed for the biosphere, all the ingredients need to be designed to be compostable or being burned in a fireplace. We stay in the middle, we invest endless money, and there is no benefit for, the us, for us and not for the environment as well. So this is why we see we are at the very, very beginning when you have nine chemical, uh, 41 chemical elements in a mobile phone, and we call it recycling when we get nine out, out of them. No indium, no gallium is recovered. All the rare ones are not. When you have 40 alloys in a fiat, yeah, uh, for example, what do you get out? <laughs> uh, building steel. Yeah. All the rare elements are gone. Yeah. The nickel, the cobalt, the manganese, the molybdenum, the vanadium, all these rare elements are all disappearing, and we call it recycling. How perverse. Yeah. There's no recycling, it's just downcycling. And it's critical. Uh, we, we analyzed the steel in Assisi when after the earthquake. We did the same in Turkey. Because of being more efficient, the copper concentration is increasing in the building steel. And we find up to 1.2% of copper in the steel in Assisi, which means that the steel breaks easily in the case of an earthquake. 
it gets brittle, yeah, like an osteoporosis bone. And this is ridiculous. So we make the wrong things perfect. Instead of saying, what is building steel? It's, building steel only needs iron, a little carbon, nickel might not hurt, but all the others is, is, is useless or dangerous for the steel. And we call it recycling. Yeah. This is just e this is fake news. Yeah? We are preparing the ground for the Donald Trumps of the world because we are doing fake news when we call about these things recycling when it's such a bloody downcycling in it as well. So, uh, and this is where we are. Yeah, sustainable development means the needs of the present generation. How sad. Yeah? Verona wants to be climate neutral. <laughs> yeah, I can read it. In 2040, I could read. Yeah? How perverse. Yeah? You can be only climate neutral when you don't exist. Yeah. So uh, did you ever see a climate neutral tree? So we want to be more stupid than a tree. A tree is always good for the climate, but we want to be neutral. <laughs> you can only be no neutral when you're not existing. Yeah. So uh, why don't we want to be good? Copenhagen already wants to be carbon neutral in 25. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this means, yeah, this is guilt management from the past. Zero. Yeah. Who wants to be zero? Yeah. Carbon neutral. Yeah. How is that? You can read it everywhere here. No, we want to be good for the planet, not carbon neutral. You can minimize your carbon footprint. If you take Silvio Berlusconi against Monica Bellucci, these are 7,000 liters of warm water difference. Yeah. You just need to cut your hair shorter. Yeah. Then it helps. You can see it here. Yeah. So, yeah. So it helps so much you can minimize your footprint. When you, when you empty, your di ent uh, empty your digestion system flying from Milano into New York, and the, everybody does it from a 747, it saves uh, five tons of kerosene. So for being less bad, you can do a lot. Yeah, but does it really help us? No. It only perpetuates existing stuff. Yeah. So why should we not be beneficial? But here you see the car industry, <laughs> zero emission. A tree makes oxygen. That's not a zero emission. That's an emission. Yeah. This is the first book it did together with my American friend, Willie McDonough, an architect, yeah, it, which is really designed for all the fascisms. Yeah. We talked about Nazis and neo-Nazis before, Robert and I, because he, uh, he knows it from his own experience. This is why it's so important to listen to people like Roberto because he knows it, what the whole time in it, yeah? It needs a whole development. You need to look at things from the beginning, yeah? And, but this is the first book which is designed, yeah, that the fascists can burn them, yeah? So, because we need to love our enemies, yeah? So, now they can burn them safely. Isn't it nice? So, so it's the first book which is positively defined, not free of, yeah? So, e this is cradle to grave. People try to be 100% evil, 90% evil, and the goal is zero. How sad. It's all guilt management. Let's be not efficient, but effective. Look at a tree in spring. It's a cherry tree is not efficient, it's effective. Yeah? So now we have a positive statement. We don't need to be perfect anymore at Werner and Merz, wherever. You can say, hey, wait a minute, we now have 10% where we want to be, but the more you buy from us, the quicker we are. Traditional sustainability makes your customer your enemy. It tells you, oh, please don't buy my stuff. Yeah? Could you avoid it? Yeah? Now we need to say, hey, let's find out where we are and don't be perfect because your customer is not perfect as well. But just go where you want to be in 2030. Now your customer becomes your change agent. It helps you to make a difference. It makes sense to reduce the use of fossil fuels, definitely. But where's our positive footprint? We take a northern approach when in Sweden, every footprint is a disaster. So you want to minimize your footprint. But when you walk along the river here, Every footprint here means a little wetland, a little retention space. So why don't we have a big footprint, but make it a wetland? We are calculating our ecological footprint as ne negative. Let's have a beneficial footprint for the other species. So this is where we need to look at effectiveness, not at efficiency. Look, if you want to understand the difference, you know, uh, if you need to go from Verona into Milano, it doesn't help you to go efficiently into Bolzano. Yeah, you need to first say what is the right thing. Yeah. Otherwise, you're optimizing the wrong things. Yeah. And as well, everything in life which matters is really not efficient. Yeah. Efficient, that's a Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tablet with some Italian flavor and a glass of water. This is efficiency. Yeah. But culture is more than efficiency. <laughs> it's effective to bring people together. So take a lipstick, for example. A woman eats about 6.3 kilograms of lipstick dur uh, during her lifetime. Take Chiara here, for example. Yeah? Yeah. 
Her lipstick, completely inefficient, but very effective, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it, it, think about your, your, your wife is angry about you. A 50 roses, completely inefficient, but very effective. Yeah. So think about art, beauty, n never efficient, but effective. Yeah. Bringing us together. Look at the tree in spring, no reduction, but everything is nutrient. So it's not about zero waste. It's not about reducing. Even when you think about zero waste, yeah, you think about waste. Yeah. So if I t tell you don't think about a pink elephant, you think about a pink elephant. Yeah. So think about everything being nutrient, beneficial, not zero. Yeah. Be positive. Our young selfie generation doesn't want to be zero. They want to be, be, be relevant. They want to matter. Yeah. So think about the right energy sources. So everything what is... Uh, Consumed like food, like shoe soles, like detergents, like cleaning products need to be designed for the biosphere. Yeah? Everything that is just a service, like a packaging, for example, like a washing machine, like a cleaning machine needs to be designed for the technosphere. It's a technical nutrient. Yeah? So we need to design things from the beginning differently. And when I was a student, 22 years old, I was analyzing a TV set and I identified 4,000 360 different chemicals in a TV set. And I asked, do you want to own 4,360 different chemicals or do you want to watch TV? Then I was claimed to be a communist because at that time ownership was the religion, eco-communist. Yeah. Today all the new products are all services. Yeah. So why do we still sell these machines downstairs here? How stupid, nobody needs a machine. It, you need the service of a machine. Yeah. So when you, a washing machine, for example, contains 150 cheap plastics because you always need to choose the cheapest one. Yeah. But when you just sell 3,000 times of washing, you can make the same washing machine with five plastics, which you can use over and over again. Yeah, it gives you a completely different design opportunity. So it's not a triple bottom line, it's a triple top line. We can be good for the other species, we can be good for the environment, and we can be good for business. We can now use 40 years of blame and shame in Verona, in Milano, and yeah, as an innovation engine. That's it. It's not about sustainability, because true innovation is never sustainable. Yeah, the, real, the mobile phone was never sustainable for the ones who had stationary phones. Yeah. So I can give you dozens of examples. All the real innovation is never sustainable. Otherwise, it's not an innovation. Yeah. So it means we need to look at the culture. We need to see humans as an opportunity for the planet, not as a burden. So there's a certification on cradle to cradle just because we need to connect to the others. But this is pretty strange because we need to certify with silver, gold, and platinum. <laughs> platinum is nearly as toxic as cyanide. Yeah? So, but we need to do so because society still thinks platinum is valuable. Yeah? <laughs> but so but this is why we try to, to adjust to a system. But this is where it is. It's about innovation, quality, and beauty. A product which is sensitizing, a product which makes waste, is just not a good product. That's it. Yeah? We don't even ethics for that. You just need a little self-esteem. If you don't want to be an idiot, it's enough. We can be so happy about Donald Trump because he's so obviously an idiot. So we know it's up to us. We cannot wait for the government. It's up to us to do things, make it different. Yeah. So if he would pretend, yeah, when Obama, everybody was sitting back and said, oh, Obama will fix it somehow. Yeah. Oh, we had El Gore and said, oh, we wait for El Gore, he will do it. Yeah? And nobody did anything. No, it's up to us. We learn it. Hey, we cannot wait. The industry is coming to best gather and understands it's up to us, yeah? which is nice, thanks to the organizing system. So this is just to give you a few short examples uh, for the biosphere. Look, what we do is first we design things for the biosphere. So if you see these fabrics you sit on, yeah? uh, these are the pieces you cut off are so toxic that when you make them that you need to burn them in a hazardous waste incinerator. Yeah. This is perverse because you sit on this chair it's next to a beautiful woman, you get a little nervous, and you're abrading this chair. You actually eat it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm choosing all the chemicals that you could eat them. Yeah. So it means the pieces you cut off, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. the pieces you cut off yeah, are just a nightmare. Yeah. But when we cut them off now, we can use them to make compost. We can make, uh, replace peat in gardening. It makes it 20% cheaper to make them yeah, because you put the filter at the beginning, not at the end. Yeah. But now <laughs> people use Dr. Schnell yeah, from Munich to clean the, the, the stuff. I, I did the most beautiful 
uh, fabric, yeah, and then it's used Dr. Schnell's toxic stuff on it, yeah. This is a nightmare, yeah. Yeah, so why I'm here is because we need the right cleaning substance with the right products, otherwise it's uh, completely irrelevant, yeah. So we work with, with uh, for example, we, yeah, we work with Talcat. Talcat is one of the biggest companies making flooring systems. And we do this as we define positively. We make the first carpets designed for indoor use, yeah. But now when you <laughs> use, take, let's take Dr. Snell, yeah. Yes, and you use it as a cleaning product, they make 1.3 million square meters a day, yeah? and then I use the wrong cleaning product and the wrong cleaning process, yeah? and then it's useless. Whatever I do, it's just fun. This is why your industry is so key, yeah? to use the right detergents, the healthy stuff, and we, this is why we need to discuss it here, what is the future yeah, of this industry, and this industry is key for that. So we, this is the first toilet paper for, uh, it we did with the company in the Netherlands, and it's black because there is no green which is green. The green is the most toxic pigment we know. Yeah? This is why we had to take black, which is just carbon. Yeah? This is the first paper by Googler, basically. We did the first black for, for, uh, uh, for underwear, brass. It's eight years ago. It was the first black, deep black, which you can put on your skin without getting ill from it. Yeah? We make compostable shoe soles, yeah, etc. with Puma. So we do this for a lot. And Sure, we are thankful for a company close by, Aquafil, yeah, because yeah, I started a, a campaign as a student to get the fishing nets out of the oceans because it killed so many uh, fish. And the only one who actually listened to me was this guy, yeah, Giulio Bonazzi. Yeah, and he is just such a great person. Let's celebrate him, invite him for the next one, because he's such a, a marvelous person. If we don't honor the pioneers, we don't have pioneers. Yeah? And he makes, I out of his fishing nets, he makes yarn and he makes carpets, etc. And we can use it in Tarket, but still we need the right cleaning products for that. Yeah? So we can do this for, uh, for all different types of things. And we come closer to this industry. You see here Method, for example. We see uh, Werner and Merz. And I can do this because I'm not paid for that. Can I get your sample here? So I'm not. It's not a paid promotion because I don't get paid for that, but because you're here, I want to tell you that this is the first packaging in Italy which is 100% post-consumer material recycled, the first one. If you don't honor these pioneers, we don't have them. Yeah. And the content is the same. So this is Werner and Merz. You can, I think you have a booth here, isn't it? So you can go there, and I'm not paid to say this, that you know this, yeah? just, but if we, if we don't talk about Real innovation, we don't have them. Yeah. So it's just then we just play games. Yeah. We just to try to be a little less bad for that. And, and so we can go through that. We can see this ac across for all different things. You see the uh, industry products coming up. Oh, by the way, this is a funny one. We pay the fishermen for not throwing plastic back into the oceans. We have 10 million tons of plastic in the ocean. In the Mediterranean, the plastic concentration is already twice as high than the fish concentration. Yeah in the Mediterranean Sea. So we pay the fishermen, and it looks a little bit like, like some weapons here, it's not the intention, but <laughs> what it, we, the, there is the plastic from the oceans in the packaging itself. Yeah. And we did this for method here. Yeah. And you see this here, a cleaning product for biological cycles and technical cycles. You can see it here yeah, with companies, we see that. And so there are products for the technosphere. We can make carpets which clean the air. Yeah. So as you know, we are losing 450,000 lives of by inhaling fine dust. This is 13 times more than by traffic accidents in Europe. 13 times more. Yeah. So it's nice that we talk about safe traffic yeah, and travel, and we did a lot, like Roberto mentioned, yeah, th there was a death rate of 15,000 people in this country yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah. Today we are down to 4,000, whatever. Yeah. 3,000. Yeah, but why don't we do the same for fine dust? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we actively and then cleaning is key. Look, I, what I would love to do with you, I would develop a chemical, a cleaning agent which you put on a facade, which absorbs fine dust. Yeah, then you have to clean the facade every six weeks because why should I use my lung to clean the air when the facade can do so? Isn't it? Yeah. So these carpets are actively cleaning the air from Deso, Target, the, the Air Master. Yeah. We developed this jointly. You're no longer selling stuff. You're selling the use of it. Yeah, so this is 10 years of, l of healthy sitting insurance. 
So you don't use it needs the cheapest stuff. And it's Shiroflex, it's Steelcase, it's Herman Miller. There are the big shots of this planet doing office furniture as a service. But, but you see downstairs, there's no equipment as services here. And there's some leasing stuff. No, it's a different design what we need. We see this for bottles, we see this for building materials, we see the ceramic tiles. I would love to see the Italian ceramic industry yeah, they make hundreds of millions of these ceramic tiles and they are pure hazardous waste. We replaced 83 chemicals in a ceramic tile yeah, when making the tile in, in, in Maastricht, Formosa. But these are whatever, 8 million tiles a year, beautiful ones, big ones. Yeah, but here is the tile, ceramic tile industry. But then you need the right cleaning product as well yeah, for that. And they are not on the market really for most of these areas. We can make wooden systems perfectly. Toma, here from, from uh, Italy. Yeah? You can see it here. We, can, we don't need to sell facades anymore. We can sell windows as a service. 20 years of healthy looking through insurance. It makes far more beautiful things, but it needs the right cleaning system for that. And we still don't have it in place. Yeah? We, I did a lot of work with my students on healthy stuff. We can make buildings like trees, buildings which support life. But therefore, it really means to make positive things. It supports life. It makes fresh air. So we are how proud to see this. Here you see Shuko is Europe's largest maker of windows. They are no longer selling these windows. They are selling the use of the window for 20 years. But they need the service for that. They need the right cleaning systems for that. And we don't have them. This is why I'm here. Yeah. Even there's a holiday in, in Netherlands and Germany today. But I came here because say, hey, here's an innovation opportunity for the industry mm. because we can make far better stuff. You can never make an energy-saving window without toxic materials in it. But they are only toxic for the biosphere. In the technosphere, they can use endlessly. Copper is immensely dangerous in biological systems, but in technical systems forever. But these cleaning products need to be designed for the biosphere. We can make beautiful things, and therefore we need the water which we get from cleaning products that we can use them directly as for irrigation. So this is why these companies like Vernon Merz need to improve their products still from that point. Yeah, but this is the future, and the more you buy from these companies, the faster they can change. Yeah. So we do this in different places. You can see this is all architecture which still doesn't have the right cleaning products with it. Yeah. This is the most advanced one. It's a Dutch one, which really a building is a tree for that. This is a Sweden one. It's the best building in Sweden, cradle to cradle. Yeah. A happy, healthy school, which is important. The vandalism goes down in these buildings yeah, for more than 90% when people feel safe and when they feel accepted. Yeah, they don't they destroy the buildings. They don't scribble on the walls. Yeah, and in, so these, these four girls basically were the ones who initiated cradle to cradle at the school. Yeah. It was the girls, yeah, not the teachers. Because this young generation is nice. I mean, for young people, as you know, you, you, for you, uh, being respected in a social network is at least as important as money. Yeah. So you can, uh, whatever money you want to earn, if people hate you in Facebook, on Instagram, or whatever, yeah, it, it doesn't matter for you anymore. Yeah. So it's why recognition matters far more, and this is interesting. So we do this for the city hall in Fenlo, for example. It, it is a building where the indoor air quality is better than outside air, but we still don't have the right cleaning products in place. Yeah? So we need your help. Yeah? It says buildings as material banks. Yeah? They, you can get them, it, it makes the buildings much cheaper. You don't need to sell the copper. You can sell the use of the copper in the building. It makes it much cheaper. We do this with companies like Trace and Summer. Yeah? And I want to show, show you a little video. Can I have it, do I have it in here or need I need to get out of the presentation? No? Yeah, I can think of mm. I need your technical support for this video here, please. Because we can make buildings completely differently, but it shows that the surfaces are big mar far more important. You can do, the innovation is just starting in this industry. It's just beginning. Yeah. So I think you need to get out of it. It is not in there. Maersk Line will implement the most comprehensive cradle-to-cradle -cradle passport ever seen for the new giant triple-E ships. The cradle-to-cradle -cradle passport 
will identify each and every nut and bolt of the giant 60,000 ton ships, making vastly improved recycling possible for most materials as well as safe disposal for the rest. The materials of the ships will all be marked and numbered, separating high and low grade steel, copper wiring, hazardous materials and waste. Based on the sorting, it will be possible to reuse nearly all materials for new ships, making dangerous and polluting scrapping a thing of the past. So this is Maersk. Maersk is the world's largest logistics system. And do you understand how important now coatings, paints are, uh, and how important it is how to clean it? Yeah. So the future of this industry is just beginning. Yeah. And it's relevant for the, because then you can put information in things. You can make beneficial surfaces which support life. But we are at the beginning. Can you imagine? I was here. I, I was here. At, I was here at the Fiat factory of the future. <laughs> I think, can you imagine? They showed me 200 robots. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what, whether I should laugh or cry about it. Yeah. And this is the factory of the future. Hey, nobody needs a robot. Nobody. Can you keep this in mind? You need welding points, not robots. Yeah. When you buy the robot, you're stuck with it. Yeah. You have to maintain it. You have to insure it. You have to do everything. When you buy the service, of it, then you get what you buy. Yeah. So nobody needs a solo collector. All these people buy solo collectors here. How ridiculous. Yeah. You need to harvest photons. Yeah. A digital world is not about a life cycle. Yeah. People make a life cycle of a, a drink bottle. Yeah. Oh, sick. There's no life in this bottle. Yeah. In, a, in, a, in a digital world, we need defined use periods, not life not durability, we need defined use periods. And it's not about a circular economy, it's a sphere. Today it's a, a, a washing machine, tomorrow it's a carpet, next time it's a car component, it's a sphere, it's a space, not a circle. A circle is a design tyranny, yeah? And it stops us from innovation. I don't want to have the same chair for the next 5,000 years, yeah? yeah? So this is why it's where it starts with, yeah? So when I'm analyzing a European brand, yeah? just filing bankruptcy, solar world, yeah? Uh, after 19 years, this solar panel still had 93% has nine, nine, uh, of its functionality, 93. Yeah. The Chinese solar panel loses within five years half of it. Even the Chinese solar panel at the beginning is 30% cheaper. But overall, over 40 years, yeah, <laughs> the solar panel made in Europe is 40% cheaper when you don't buy it, when you buy the use of it. So we stay in the middle of it. So this is why we need to understand we have service products and we have consumption materials. And the cleaning chemical yeah, is a consumption material. The packaging is a service. We don't need the packaging, it's a service. It needs to be designed for that. In the future, it will be not this stupid high-density high polyethylene. This doesn't make sense. It will be nylon. Yeah? And then it's used here. Yeah? And then it's not used again for the next packaging because it stinks otherwise. Yeah, this, and this polyethylene has a memory effect which makes the plastic smell. Yeah, now it needs to be nylon, and then the next use is aquafil. Yeah, here. Yeah, making a carpet. The next one will be a car uh, uh, ventilation system out of it. It's a sphere. Yeah, yeah, not. Yeah, that's why you're stuck with the same ugly stuff. It looks terrible, isn't it? Yeah. So, but, but yeah, so we need beautiful things which people like to touch. They need to be sensual, yeah? Not this terrible thing. Even you think, oh, there are only cleaning ladies who have to handle it. No, they have the right as well to have beautiful stuff in their hands, isn't it? Not just such an ugly thing, yeah? So it's why we, we need to start with innovation. We need to use the best materials, not the cheapest one, yeah? So, this is you don't, when you make a windmill, it's 60,000 euros cheaper. When you don't set, buy the copper, you buy the use of the copper. It's a material pooling. We don't need to buy a washing machine, you buy 3,000 times of washing. Yeah. So the laser print, uh, the 3D printing, please be aware for all the future people here, uh, it's the, one of the worst cases, reasons for fine dust. Yeah. It's never made for us. The laser, so 3D printers put them with separate ventilation systems. They're a nightmare. 
Yeah. But even uh, the people here are so proud to, to cook the stuff with olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they make their steaks and their whatever hamburgers with olive oil. Yeah. This is a nightmare. The olive oil is never made for that purpose. Yeah. Under no circumstances. When you, you are inhaling aerosols, uh, dramatically, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, there were, uh, there were five famous chefs in the last year died of lung cancer because of inhaling uh, aerosols, never smoking before, never. Yeah. So this is a strong uh, fine dust problem we have by using <laughs> olive oil for, for cooking. It doesn't help. It's good for the salad. You can put it later on top of it, but not for, for pan-fried steaks, whatever. No fish, etc. But it's all done with olive oil. And for all the tourists to say, it, oh, it reduces here for the tourists. No, it's a nightmare. So we can make cruise ships as services. It makes 30% cheaper cruise ships. You can make them in Genoa. Yeah. So you can use algae to, uh, to grow facades, but you need to clean these facades. This is where the future begins, because the, 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 the effectiveness of making growing algae is, is necessary with clean surfaces. Yeah. See, it, this is important, because when you eat uh, beef, you only pick up 20% uh, of the protein. When you eat algae, you pick up 80% of the protein. And instead of t growing uh, corn to make biogas, yeah, yeah, we can, uh, uh, this is, uh, on one hectare of facade, you can grow 80 times more than with one hectare of, uh, uh, than uh, with corn. Yeah. And when you grow corn, you lose between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil per hectare, yeah, <laughs> which is the main source for carbon. People talk about the greenhouse effect, but it's not in. Yeah. And you can question climate change, but you cannot question that a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere means a different chemistry for the atmosphere, and you can prove it because it changes the heat capacity of the, you know, of the atmosphere. So we need to get the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. We can make new packaging, and you can learn from Italy. It's fun to litter. People enjoy littering, but it needs to be the right packaging. Yeah. So yeah, when we see it in Europe, in the north, people throw things yeah, uh, next to the park bench. But here, they enjoy littering because you can mark your territory. Yeah? You said, I am here, yeah? but with the right packaging. Yeah? So we need to d get nutrients back, yeah? and we need to recover them. And I can show you examples. We need to get carbon dioxide back, and we need cleaning products for that. We, these are artificial trees, which are 200 times more effective than natural trees. We, need make, we can combine it with water vapor, and we can make methanol locally yeah, which with that. So we, and you see here, we started in Milano originally with that, but it needs to be the right cleaning products. These are universities. There's a big conference. I give you free tickets, uh, 10 fellowships, if you want to be there to go to this conference about Cradle to Cradle. There will be 1,500 young kids, mostly. These are all local groups just for Germany but there are more and more for different places. And it's two, in two languages. And thank you. I'm a little fast with, uh, uh, with, uh, <laughs> with my uh, text, but, but I only have 20 minutes, and we were a little late anyway. So uh, I just want to show you at the end. I was at the Biennale in Venice, and I showed how we can make buildings as trees, yeah? buildings which support life, yeah? not making bu It's about celebrating our human footprint, not minimizing it. Because when people feel safe, they are generous and friendly. When they have fear, they have become greedy. Yeah. So they grab it all. When you say, oh, overpopulation, they say, hey, before you have it, I better grab it. Yeah. So it's, it, no, it's about when people feel safe, even the poorest of the poor are always sharing with us. So let's celebrate life on this planet, not minimizing our footprint. So it's not about carbon neutral, it's about carbon positive, not about efficient, but about effective. Not about less bad, but about more good. Not about low carbon, but about beneficial carbon, and so on. Yeah. So I showed it in the Biennale. Yeah, I was the only non-architect which was there to show the future of architecture with that, and we demonstrated. So it was about celebrating our human footprint, not minimizing it. Yeah, you can tra transform the whole mountain into footprints. It was just fun. Yeah. And so yeah, everybody could have a footprint. Yeah. And people came by and they enjoyed it. Yeah. So, and so this is what APR our institute is doing. It's, we, it's about celebrating human footprint, not minimizing damage. Thank you very much.
Bene, è stato un, un grande finale anche perché sono entrati in campo gli oggetti, perché fino ad avevamo parlato di idee astratte, poi il flacone del detergente è entrato con la sua materialità e, e fond, forse non, non so se abbiamo tempo ancora perché mi pare che siamo arrivati alla fine, perché avrei voluto fare un'altra domanda che era questa, se tutto quello che avevamo detto poteva ripartire dalla materialità degli oggetti, come poteva essere se una sorta di ripartenza dal basso del, degli stessi concetti che però acquistano una diversa materialità e si intrecciano diversamente col mondo dell'industria e dei consumatori. Ma mi fanno dei cenni che il tempo a nostra disposizione è esaurito e quindi io ringrazio i partecipanti a questo panel e le persone che ci hanno ascoltato direttamente e quelle che ci hanno ascoltato indirettamente. Buon proseguimento. Grazie.